Hi, I'm Dr. Pompa. This is actually part two of a two-part series on how to make your home safe. In part one, we talked about how to have safe water, which is a critical component to good health. Part two is probably something that just resonates very deeply with me because I myself was chemically sensitive and I treat a lot of chemically sensitive patients, most of which one of the number one sources keeping them ill is their own home in their air in the home. The EPA estimates that your air quality in your home is seven times more toxic than the worst day in the city of uh, Los Angeles. So if we're going to regain our health or even maintain our health, we better have good air quality. The first thing I start with is air filtration. This is an April Air 5000 unit that is definitely needed for at least a square footage around 5,000 square foot like this home where we have the air coming in here through here and it's a much better filtration unit than just the electrical ones or of course the very thin ones that most people have in their home. This is taking out a lot of mold spores, it's taking out a lot of particulate matter that's in the air, those things carry toxins. So when we talk about things like biotoxins that mold produces, and when we talk about VOCs and other chemicals, they, carry, they get carried on particles, this filtration unit takes them out of the air. However, good air quality goes way beyond just air filtration, because good air quality also has a lot to do with humidity and other chemicals. Another thing that I have is this unit right here that is actually putting hydroxyl units into the air which number one, diminish your viral counts in your house, your bacterial counts, your mold counts, um, but also it takes VOCs, volatile organic compounds or chemicals out of the air. At least about 80 to 85% is what is estimated. So it uses, it's not just an average ultraviolet light. This is a special unit that again puts hydroxyl units in the air. If you look above me here, um, this is actually a dehumidifier. One of the key components to having a safe home or a safe building is controlling moisture and humidity levels. The reason why is because mold is literally an, uh, an epidemic in this country, making people very, very sick with chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. Mold will start to form in a home or a building over 50 um, over 50 uh, percent humidity. Over 60, you've got a major problem. In basements, most people's basements, they're over 60, 65. You are forming mold whether you see it or not. We can set, I can set my humidity to stay under 50. I like it around 45. And in the summer time, in the winter time, we don't want the humidity to drop too much. On this side, I want to come around here, bring the camera on. I want to show you what I do in the winter time to actually keep my humidity up. So come on around. This is my humidifier. We're actually putting moisture into the air. So what this is important for is if your air gets too dry, it literally can start breeding certain viruses. And also, I mean, it's not good for your furniture, it's not good for your lungs, it's not good for your skin. So this is something that we do only probably in the northern climates because we have forced air which really dries out the air. Now, I think the most important component to um, a whole house system of making clean air or at least protecting you from your air is what we call an ERV unit, which is an exchange ventilating system. What it does is it brings outside air in and it brings stale air out. So right now, and you can't see that piece of equipment here, I'm gonna take you up into my attic in a minute and show you it, but what's happening is, is I have fresh air coming from the outside being dumped into my air return. And that's really, really important when we're dealing with chemicals. It's really important when we're dealing with biotoxins, mold, and humidity. Fresh air from the outside is the key to having a safe building. So let's go take a look at that unit. All right, we're about ready to go up in my attic, but before we do, I wanna show you this. This is actually how we suck the stale air out of the home, this vent here. Um, you wanna find a central high location, always works best. The air can also be taken right out of your unit itself, either the return or the supply line. However, I like it best pulled straight from the home. So come on up, let's take a look, let's take a look at the whole unit. All right, we're up here in my attic. It's always good to have a carbon filtration when you're in the attic. See all this pink stuff? Insulation, formaldehyde, bad idea. Formaldehyde is a cancer causer, big problems. 
I wear a mask, except for this because you wouldn't hear me talk. But anyways, this is what I just showed you. This is pulling the, um, from the vent that I just got done showing you, it pulls the air in here, um, the stale air from the home, crosses over here and comes out this one and gets brought to the outside. Now, this pipe, if you look at this one coming around this side, is pulling fresh air from the outside, crosses over this way and brings the fresh air downstairs right in to my air return, which you couldn't see, but I pointed that out to you. The reason we have an air cross is because we want to take the warm air from the stale air on the inside, cross it over, but never touching the cold air coming in. So literally you can warm the air about 40 degrees in the winter. So this works in the summer and the winter, and also in the summertime, it will bring some of the moisture out of the humid air so you're not causing a bunch of humidity in the house. This is why it's known as the perfect open window, winter or summer. Guys, this is the key to having good air in your house. This brings out mold, biotoxins, chemicals, and a constant source of fresh air, bringing out that, that stale air. Ventilation is the key. When we look at why so many sick buildings and so many ha people have moldy homes, it's because we're building homes tighter, keeping all the chemicals in, uh, keeping all the moisture and humidity in. There's no breathing, no ventilation. In the old days, homes weren't this tight, so they weren't as toxic. This fixes the problem. Now, I also want to point out a couple more things here. Um, this is a, a whole house uh, a dehumidifier. I had one downstairs, but I also have one upstairs because this is a pretty darn big house. So that's what this does. And this right here um, is the return. So all the, the air comes through this and we have another filter over there, same one as I had downstairs. And then this is the supply line underneath. Now, here's a big mistake people make, especially in attic units. If you notice, there's a special silver tape on every joint. That's this tape right here. What I did is I came up here and I literally taped every one of these joints everywhere you could see. The reason being is because this is sucking air from your home, a vacuum. If there's cracks in here, which every time there are, you're pulling this formaldehyde air and all these chemicals right into your air supply. Big mistake. You know, children with asthma, uh, children with you know chronic problems, people never look here. If you're concerned about your air, you have to understand where these where this pollutants can come into your air, and you better understand how to truly filtrate it. But that ERV unit to me is the key, the most important part of making clean air in your home is bringing in fresh air, bringing out stale uh, stale air. That's ventilation. Let's take a walk back downstairs. And I want to send you off to Warren's house because he's going to point something out. First of all, he's going to show you how to do this, all this filtration and all the air units in a condo or a small home. Because you know what? You don't just want to pull air from the outside any location. He's going to show you why that's important that you choose a really good location so you don't add more toxins to your home. So let's go. So what does it look like to have a whole house air filtration unit in a smaller home versus a larger home? And there's two main differences I want to show you. The, the similarities is I still have the energy return ventilator bringing in that fresh air, and I also have the garden air unit. What's different is two things. One, I have a portable dehumidification unit versus a whole house. The reason I can get away with a portable unit is one, I don't have a basement, and two, my home is between that 800 and 1200 square foot where this unit's able to keep up with that humidity in the summer to keep me below that critical level so I don't produce mold. And also, in tighter spaces and smaller homes, you need to look for um, a type of um, air, um, whole house air filtration, actually the particulates that Dr. Pompa explained, a little slimmer unit. This is the April 4200 that has a MERV 13 filter in it. So really that's the only two differences between a larger unit home and a smaller, more apartment condo type place. All right guys, I'm outside of my condo right now and there's only one thing I want to show you here. The, where's my fresh air intake is for my air exchanger. And the reason we put it here instead of right up here where a lot of people want to put air exchangers into, this is where the fresh air is coming in just like in Dr. Pompa's unit that he has in his, his home, is that you'd be sucking in attic air if it was located here, which is toxic because you'd have the formaldehyde, the things that you want to you know, keep out of your home, you'd actually be sucking in and blowing in. Not good. So what I did is I placed it down here where it's pulling fresh air that's not going to be contaminated with attic air. Those ERV units 
they cost anywhere between $1,000 and $2,000, depending obviously the size. Uh, obviously worth every penny in my mind. Uh, and there's different ways to install them. Most of your heating and HVAC guys can do it for you, but a lot of you handy guys can do it yourselves. Uh, look, remember to bring it full circle. The EPA estimates that your indoor air quality is seven times more toxic than the outdoor air quality. Um, whatever it costs to make your home safe. This is where your family is spending the majority of your time. Uh, you sleep in this eight, you know, eight hours a night, not to mention you know, the other time in your home. Uh, you, know, you have kids. You know, this is the hidden source of why so many people are getting sick today. And it is worth every penny to make your home safe, guys. I hope that convinces you. I hope that helps you. Uh, and we'll see you next time.